It's micro-teaching time, and we are looking at the aims of the Nazi party in the early 1920s. We're going to start with the person who became their leader, Adolf Hitler, and his career in World War I. Adolf Hitler worked as a messenger for the German army. This meant his job was to run between trenches communicating important information. It was one of the most dangerous jobs in the German army, and he did it very well. He fought so bravely that he won the Iron Cross twice, both first and second class. While fighting in the war, he was wounded by a gas attack, which was when he found out that Germany had lost. Now Hitler, just as every other German soldier had been doing, had been soaking up propaganda from the German government telling them that they were winning. So the announcement of the defeat came as a huge shock to him, and he couldn't accept it. Like many German soldiers in the army, he blamed a conspiracy of Jews and communists for secretly giving in when really German was win Germany was winning. And this, as we know by now, is known as stab in the back theory. At the end of the war, Hitler continues to work for the German army, but his role changes. He becomes a spy. And it's as a spy that he meets the German Workers' Party in a bar. His job is to spy on groups that might be a threat to the new government and want to destroy it. But instead of doing that, he joins the German Workers' Party. He does this because their views correspond with his own. They too are against the Treaty of Versailles. They too want to return land to Germany. And they too believe that Jews are not Germans. They are led at this time by a man called Drexler. He agrees with Hitler's beliefs, but is quite boring, as we can see by this man who's falling asleep in front of one of Drexler's speeches. Hitler changes this. He joins and takes control. And one of the first changes for this party are his amazing speeches. Hitler has an ability to speak to a crowd in a way that very few people have had, either before or since. He seems like he's communicating to you. And because of his much more entertaining speeches about the same things that Drexler had been talking about, he gets more members. These members are picked up mainly from those people who hate the Weimar culture of 1924 to 1929 the people who would have said nicht Deutsch or not German. After a while, Hitler formulates the, formulates the 25 points, which summarise what he wants to happen to Germany. And here they are. The first of those is the destruction of the Treaty of Versailles. He also wants to rebuild Germany's disarmed army. He also wants to take back the land that has been taken away from Germany. This is known as Lebensraum. He wants to eradicate any Jewish leaders. This included Jewish people who ran newspapers. He wanted to destroy the Weimar Republic and he wanted to destroy communism. And he believed that all of this could be accomplished by the use of terror and violence. This message and his amazing speeches resonated clearly with the army, with the older people and the unemployed. And over time, there is a gradual increase in the, in the amount of people joining the Nazis and support for the Nazis too. However, there is not widespread for the Nazi party because at this time, Germany is surfing on a wave of money. Because of the Dawes plan, Germany's economy has recovered and life for most people is largely okay, which means they're not interested in Hitler's extreme answers. However, should this money disappear and Germany collapse back into poverty, in all likelihood, we will see a return of the problems that affected Germany and Hitler's message will become more appealing to a wider range of groups. To understand everything that you need for this topic, you need to be able to, at the very minimum, do these three things. First of all, you need to be able to describe the aims of the Nazi party in the 1920s. They're found in this part of the diagram here. You also need to explain why the Nazis gained some support in the 1920s. Again, this can all be found in this part of the diagram. To really stretch yourself and to really have a firm grasp on this topic, you also need to be able to link this to the Dawes plan and explain why the Nazis did not gain widespread support at this time. That's it. Thank you for listening. More videos to follow.